Hello and welcome to the Mike's DIY Tips channel on YouTube. I'm Mike and in this video I'm going to show you a neat way of storing an ironing board on the back of a door like this. The ironing board comes off quite easily like that. This is a door to an understairs cupboard and the ironing board takes up absolute minimal space so that access to the cupboard is unhindered. Each ironing board needs its own uh, restraint and uh, support system. In my case the weight is taken on the bottom and this top one is just a restrainer to stop the ironing board coming away from the door. Notice that it doesn't rattle or move when I swing the door. To work out what your ironing board needs by way of support and restraining system, start by taking the door off its hinges. So I've got the door laid out flat and I've got the ironing board on top so that we've got the leg folding mechanism exposed. That's the top of the door and to remind us I've got a arrow here. So if that's the top, this is the bottom when we need to take the weight of the ironing board here as well as restraining it to stop it moving away from the door like that when the door is opened. Likewise at the top we need some kind of restraining device to stop it coming away from the door when the door is opened. So let's have a close-up of this end and then we'll do a close-up of that end and I'll show you how to visualise what kind of restraining block we need there and there. So I'm going to use this crossbar which has a slight kink in it to take the weight of the ironing board and also to be restrained by the blocks of wood that I'm going to put on there and there. So I've been experimenting with cardboard, quite thick cardboard, um, the thin stuff that you get on cereal packets or birthday cards, it's uh, not thick enough, you need something a bit more substantial ideally. And you can experiment and try different shapes and so on until you come up with the one that's going to work, which is that one, there and there. And there are the corresponding blocks that I made to do the job. And I can show you it works because it's been working for us for many years. Then we need to do the same at the other end. Cardboard cut out again but this time an entirely different shape because all we want to do is to restrain this top piece from coming away from the door. We've got quite a long leg there because the idea is the ironing board pushes up into this gap here while the bottom bit engages on the two hooks then the whole ironing board drops down about a centimetre and this remains to restrain the ironing board. And there's the block that does it. is just less than the gap between these silver bars so that the ironing board can't move from side to side. You've probably noticed that at the top of the door here got a piece of board across the door and we've got the similar thing at the bottom. And the reason is that this is a standard flush door and flush doors are notorious for being hollow. There's no substance inside. They're faced with either a thin layer of plywood or hardboard the only real substance to the door 
is a thin frame round the edge. And to check how deep the frame is, look on the end of the door and you'll see a joint there. And in this case it's something like uh, 30 or 35 millimetres, no more. So we have to fix the plywood on the face of the door so that we can fix our restraining blocks that we've just been designing. And this plywood board, which is 9mm thick, is screwed with screws that go at an angle like that. So that they're sure to bite into the flimsy bit of frame that we've got. Same at the other end. My remarks so far have been referring to the door as a flush door. But it's quite possible that you've got a door with rectangular panels and that could either be a solid door or it could be a hardboard skin door with the pressed cutouts. You'll know by the weight of the door and just by doing that whether it's solid or hollow. If it's a solid door then you probably don't need these cross pieces because you've got plenty of wood to screw to at the top and at the sides. What I should have explained is that the positioning of these cross pieces up or down the door, this is the bottom, the same at the top, has to be geared to where you need to fix the uh, blocks. So it's, you can, before you fix this to the door, cut it already with the holes drilled and then just leave it resting on the door and experiment with positions to make sure it's all going to work before you put your screws in and commit yourself.